Hello and welcome to the Therapist Marketing Podcast. My name is Rosie Piercy. I'm a chiropractor, clinic director and practice builder. And I'm here to help you build the practice of your dreams. In this podcast, I take you through the highs and lows of my marketing journey to build the, the clinics that I have to help you along the way. So let's get started. So in this episode, um, which I'm recording on the 20th of January, 2021, Happy New Year to everyone, if I haven't said it to you already, um, I'm talking about surviving a crisis, um, getting your clinic through, at the moment, the global pandemic, but in reality, it could be any crisis that hits you at any point, because it's tough. We've been doing this now in the UK for for 10 months, since we, we sort of first locked down in March. And the, the feeling I'm getting from the therapist I talk to is we're all fatigued. I think everyone's fatigued generally, but it's hard. This, this third lockdown we've gone into in the UK means that more therapists are closed again. It's more like the lockdown we had in March originally. And it's it's hard to keep going, whether you're open and able to see patients. But obviously it's it's tricky because not many people want to come out as much and people are having to cancel because they're self-isolating and so everything's very up and down and it's difficult if you're closed because you're closed and I think particularly a lot of the therapists have closed at the moment you've been more probably more shut than you have been open for the past 10 months and it's really hard to keep the motivation together to to keep your business going so what I wanted to share today is um, the plan that I've used to help me through this crisis to help me get my clinic through this crisis and to get me through this crisis because it's not easy and it's not a kind of formula like you just do this on this day or this or that on that day kind of plan it's more like a just a a a strategy that I've kept through throughout the year to keep me because it is nearly a year now to keep everything ticking over so I'm going to go through that and then there is a, a free download, which will be in the show notes, um, of a sort of checklist of the plan. If you find it easier to do things on paper than to listen, then there is that. It's completely free to download, so you can get your copy of it. I mean, you might want to pause me now, download it, and then be looking at that as we go through, but it's whatever's easiest for you. So the first thing I want to say about getting your clinic for a crisis is to look after yourself. Now, this might seem a bit odd. It's not big practice building, but in a way, you are the most important person in your practice. If you do not function well, if you cannot cope, if you're putting yourself under too much pressure, nothing else is going to work. So look after yourself. Now, that will mean different things for different people. And as healthcare professionals, we should know all the things I'm going to say now, but sometimes we need to be told them again. So exercise if you can you know burn some of those stress hormones off whatever that might mean to you it doesn't mean you need to go for a 20 minute run or an hour run if you've never run in your life but just do something try and eat a little bit healthy but most importantly try and find some joy in every day I think that it's hard we can't do the things that would normally make us happy you know we couldn't can't fill that time with the fun things that we want whether that be activity or family or or friends necessarily so try and find something little every day that made you smile, whether it's something that your kids have done, whether it's watching the birds in the garden, that's one of my favourites, or just watching, I don't know, listening to or watching something that makes you laugh. So you've had something good that happens in every day because it's really important to keep yourself well and to look after yourself and also to be realistic about what you can do. You know, everyone's saying we're all in the same boat and I disagree. We're all on the same ocean, but all our boats are different. So some people may have all the time in the world at the moment because their clinic is shut, they're not permitted to practice and they haven't got any children and they're twiddling their thumbs, bored, not wanting what to do. Other people might be open and homeschooling like myself. And there'll be a wide range of those two, of, of those kind of different mixtures of what you have going on at the moment. Some, some therapists may be in a high risk group and shielding. So don't feel feel too much like you have to do what everyone else is doing you have to do what's right for you in your clinic now that may be that you've got time to to do tons of practice building and get things going or it may be that you're literally just going to keep things ticking over because this will end this isn't forever become the spring come the summer things will start getting back to something like normality and and things will improve so it's just a Although it's a marathon rather than a sprint, we've just got to get through this time. So the most important thing is that you look after what's right for your clinic, your boat, if you like, um, and don't feel too pressured by what other people are doing because they're in a different boat. Right, so that's the the self-help bit done. So this plan, I've 
gone through different phases of it at different times. So I'm going to start with number one, which is assess your finances. Now, I've done this three times in this global pandemic. The first time was just before we went into lockdown. I had to self-isolate, so I was at home and could see that obviously things were not going to go well in the next few months. Obviously, didn't realise quite how badly things were going to go for the world, but realised it was not going to be good. And so I worked out what I could cut, every single thing that I could cut out and where I could go for help. I did it again in September when um, more therapists started to return. And then when it became obvious that we would be going, you know, we went into tier four just before Christmas where I am in Newbury. Um, so then I kind of did it again there for as if that continued for a long time. And I was kind of expecting that there would be another lockdown in January anyway. So I've done this plan three times, uh, the, sort of the assessing bit three times. And it's not a bad thing to do because I think that I think with as not all therapists, some therapists are very, very busy minded. Some people run very, very tight ships. Um, but a lot of therapists don't like to think about the money or the business side of things. It, it's just not something they feel comfortable with. But it is incredibly important because although what you do, may, what you may be thinking that you do is you treat patients, which is what you do and you help people get better, you are a business. And therefore you should know, someone should be able to say, what's your phone bill? And you should know, not maybe to the nearest penny, but you should have a rough idea of what everything costs your business. So then you know what you don't need anymore. So basically, as I said, in, in the checklist that you can download, just go through the last quarter statements. And it's important to do the last quarter rather than the last month because often you have um, things that don't go out every month. They might go out every two months, every quarter, that kind of thing. And I'm probably telling you to tuck eggs there, but that's the kind of thing, you know, that's what you need to do. And you go to keep and you just put them in piles, keep, negotiate, cancel. Cancel anything you don't need. Um, negotiate things you can and keep the things that you can't get rid of. And if you can't negotiate things because they're in contract and they won't talk to you, then write a date down and for when you can renegotiate it and diarise it so that either you or if you have a bigger clinic, a clinic manager can be on to that to either remind you or do it for you to assess that. So that's the first thing you want to do. Once you've done that, you'll have an idea of how much it costs you to keep your clinic running. Now, many of you may know this number already, you know, within a few tens of pounds as to how much money a month you have to keep your clinic running. But it's an important number to know, and so you can write that down. Um, and, and that number will change depending on whether you're going to have to get rid of staff. Um, things like, I don't know, daft things like we used to do tea and coffee. Well, we're doing none of that now. And although it doesn't cost us an awful lot of money, it saves us a little bit at the moment. So it's all little tiny things like that. And then one thing that I found really helpful was to work out you know, in my wildest moments, moments of panic about what's happening, particularly in September, my son had to isolate and I couldn't go to work while we were waiting for the test, his COVID test to come back, which fortunately was negative. I suddenly had a panic. What happens if I have to isolate a lot? What happens if my son is in and out of school? My children are in and out of school all the time because of isolating. Um, <clears throat> so I did a mad panic of if I earn no money at all for the next X months, how how where could I find money to keep going so sometimes it's worth just writing down you know I could for instance ask my landlord to defer rent I can borrow money on this credit card I could ask this bank to extend my overdraft and you'll come up with a number which will then either reduce what your it costs you to run your clinic if you if you know really that you could like defer some payments for things and it also gives you an idea of where you can get hold of more money now you may never need to do this I've not needed to do this at all but it gave me some reassurance and stability and it made me feel a little bit better to know how I could get my costs down and how I could get hold of more money should I need it. And so that made me just feel a bit better. So that might be the sort of thing that helps you feel better. So have a go at it. As I said, I've, I've done this sort of three times. It doesn't take that long, um, but it just helps you have an idea of what you need to bring in every month. And if you haven't done it for your personal finances, then do that as well. Um, so that's assessing your finances, which is number one. Number two is show up. And by that, I mean, don't stop marketing. Don't stop trying to build your practice. Now, when I say that with a little caveat, we go back to the comments I was making about everyone being in different boats at the beginning. If you are absolutely swamped and overwhelmed, then do show up, but show up less often. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So basically, when in, we were in the first lockdown, I continued to market. Now, I wasn't open. People couldn't come and see me. But I was still putting content out every day. or well, not even every day, but every several times a week on my Facebook and Instagram channels. And um, telling people how they could help themselves. How they could set up their desk. How they could do some stretches. That kind of thing. 
because people still need help. Now, they may not be able to come and see you because because you're shot. They may not be, coming up, be able to come and see you because they're shielding or because they just simply don't want to leave the house at the moment. Whatever reason they can't come and see you doesn't mean that they don't still need help. And if you're that person offering them help, even though you can't see them, they will remember you and it's building a relationship with them before they've already come into the clinic. So that will help you attract new patients later when you can come back. And part of this plan is getting your, your business, your clinic stronger for when you're reopening or when, even if you're open now, when things get back to normal, in inverted commas, whatever that is, and people start to come into appointments more frequently than they were doing. So continue to show up with um, e- newsletters to your patients So if you're closed or if you're open, decide on a frequency, maybe weekly, fortnightly, monthly, whatever you can stick to, and keep emailing your patients so that you remain in their brain, so that that you're continuing that relationship, so that you know that they're there. And if you're shut, you could say something like, I'm always happy to jump on a phone call with you. You know, so, you know, to offer you advice or offer them a telehealth appointment if you're doing telehealth appointments, so that you're still building that that keeping that relationship and if you haven't if you're putting stuff out on social media and you've not met people before you're building relationship with people who might need you later now how often you do this depends on how much time you've got if you've got bags of time at the moment then you could be putting stuff out two or three times a week and emailing every fortnight your patients if you're so busy you've barely had time to sit down and have a cup of tea for the past two weeks then maybe you might just put one post out a week or you might decide the only thing you're going to do is you're going to email your your patients once a fortnight it's still showing up it's still being there it's still reminding of your existence it's still offering help and it will keep people in the forefront or keep you in their mind and that's what you want so step three is show not tell now i think this is really important at the moment because People who are open, what we're encouraging people to do, maybe encouraging is the wrong word because people are allowed to come and see us for essential medical care, is we're saying it's safe to come into our clinics in a global pandemic. And, you know, in the UK with this new, newly trans, trans, more transmissible virus, gosh, that's a tongue twister, it's safe to come to our clinics. Now, just writing that in text or writing down how you enter the clinic or what you're doing it's difficult for people to follow sometimes because people are going to lots of different places and they're finding everyone's doing things differently. So this is really the place to have ideally a video, but if you really can't face video pictures showing what's what's what how people enter and exit your clinic. So there's no doubt they're seeing what's going on. They've seen the changes you've made to your clinic or if you've never been to your clinic before, they're seeing what your clinic looks like and they're seeing all the precautions and protocols that you've put in place. Um, I've done one for Total Health. I'll put that in the show notes so you can see it if you want an example. But it's a really much better way of making people feel secure about A, what you've done to keep them safe and B, what they have to do so they don't get all flustered when they're there because that makes people feel anxious and unsure and we don't want any of that when they're in the clinic. Um, or And also you can use this for other things. So don't talk through how to set up someone's desk posture, show them a video or do pictures. Don't talk through foot care advice, show pictures, do videos. Whatever you're doing, do more pictures and videos because it's just easier to explain. And if you can, I know people hate being in videos, but if you can bear to be in videos, it builds that relationship more. And I think with the time when we're, we're seeing people less, people want to see people's faces and be more sociable in that way than just having text. And also if we're looking at a, an SEO type uh view on it if you're putting these onto your blogs or onto your websites google likes video so if you do a a, a opening protocol and you put a video on it or if you do a desk posture video and you put it into a blog or put it onto your website people it's going to rank rank a little bit higher because google likes video so show not tell it it really is good for patients um, and it will help them feel more that relationship building, again, it helps them more secure about coming into the clinic if, if they're coming for the first time or what they need to do if they've been there before. And it'll help them build a relationship with you more before they've even met you. <clears throat> the final one, number four, is order and plan. Now, this is particularly if you have time. Now, that may be time because you're closed or it may be time because you've had another cancellation because people are having to self-isolate and suddenly your very full day looks slightly more empty. Go through um, your website, 
your blogs, your social media profiles, all those kind of things, go through them and check everything's okay. Because often we put things out, normally not in a rushed, but we put them out efficiently, shall we say, because we're busy and we don't check back. So I've started ordering, auditing my website. That's what I'm doing in this time. So when I had a cancellation on Monday, I had sort of half an hour, 40 minutes free. So I did a bit of that. Um, and it just helps keep things better. And also it's looking to the future for when we are going to be busy. You know, the NHS is on its knees. The waiting times for lots of things are going to be more. So some people will choose to go privately rather than wait. And I think we'll be busy. So I want to make sure that my website is amazing. My social prof- my social media profiles are looking good. That my blogs are all up to scratch. Now, so that it's looking brilliant for when I need it to. Now, this will take time. This is not a five minute job. Or if it is, you've done it wrong. It's a plan that you can go through when you have time. So, as I said, if you're closed and you've got time, then you you could set about this and really do it. If you're opened and you're busy, then you might, I don't know, day one, just look at your Facebook profile. Are your prices still right? Are your are your time opening times right? Do you have you got some pictures on there that I know that I have that I need to take off that are like ten years old? I don't look like that anymore, and I don't want to look like that anymore. So I'm going to take them off. Um, but also just looking at is everything correct on it do you want to change the picture of your clinic do you want to put some different information is is what you wrote on your facebook pro um facebook business page about section correct three years ago and it's not correct now that kind of thing and then do the same for instagram or linkedin or whatever else you're on with your website you want to check does it look as good on on desktop as it does on mobile often we build it on a desktop and never look at it on a mobile but most searches will happen on mobile so we need to make sure it looks good i found a dreadful spelling mistake on my website which was embarrassing nearly had to hide under my desk i was cringing so much um and just things like that just have a look and see does it does your website still look fresh and exciting because you do we're putting some reviews on there all that kind of thing and make a list and then go through it. And then with your blogs, have a look at what blogs you had have actually written. And if you haven't written any, then sit down and make a list of the blogs that you think are the most important ones that you need. And if you have written some, look at them and see are they still good. I have quite a lot of blogs on my website, but some of them, looking back at them now, they're not they're not very long. They're not really saying anything that interesting. It was when I was first starting blogging and I was getting finding my feet, so to speak. So I'm probably going to get rid of those. I'm going to redirect them or merge them together with a few other blogs to make it a bit better. So that's things that you can do to help get everything ready. So get everything on in your that your all your marketing um, arsenal, so to speak, um, all sparkly and up together and where it is. As I said, it's not it's not a quick job. That's a longer job. So that may take time, and that's fine. You know, you don't need to be following if you're going to follow this plan you don't need to do it all in one day this may be you know months worth of work in but in tiny little bits and I think and that's a lot of what marketing and practice building is it's it's working out what you need to do realizing that most of us don't have much time so that we're going to be doing little bits you know here and there and working your way through it slowly and although you can think oh my gosh it's going to take me ages to get through this it's like yeah but you're still going to have done it might take you, I mean, my audience, my website, that's that's like a three-month process um, over little bits here and there. If I had a, a whole week of no childcare and no clinic and nothing, could I get it done then? Yeah, I'd get it done in a week. But I'm not ever going to have a week of no clinic and no children and no anything else. So it will take me longer. And that's fine because there's no race to do it. It's just making sure that at some point it gets done. Right, so that's the the four-step plan. Basically, assess your finances, show up, show not tell, and audit and plan. And this is this plan is what I've gone through over you know the past ten months. I've just looked at each one. I assess my finances. Right, I don't need to do that for a while. Am I showing up? I'm going to show up this often and decide. You know, set yourself a commitment or what you're going to do. Show not tell. I don't find video hard. I've done it a lot for a long time. Um, it gets easier, I promise. If you're just starting, you get over it. You just do. Um, and audit and plan, which is what I've I've been I've been doing as well. So it's just something to keep things going, to keep things ticking over, and to get everything ready for when we're going to be busier, which will be soon. Anyway, if you want to, as I said, you, you can download the check the checklist. Um, the links in the show notes. It's completely free. 
And if you're not already, then you might want to pop into the Practice Builders community, which is my um, Facebook group, which is the best place to get support and and guidance and ask questions and what have you for for building the practice of your dreams, whatever that may look like for you. Perfect. So um, that's the end of the podcast today. Um, Do, as I said, check the show notes out for the checklist and the link to the Practice Builders community. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.